Hey there, welcome back to IST. And uh, obviously, this week I'm not in the shop, but uh, I was given the go-ahead by my awesome shop teacher, Mr. Wilson, shout out to you, uh, for letting me show you guys this uh, awesome game. It's called PC Building Simulator. From the title, obviously, you can probably tell what it is. You build PCs and you just have a lot of, I personally have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, because you know I don't have the money to actually build PCs all the time so I just hang out in this game for a while and build some PCs you know extravagant ones one that's super cheap ones all different price ranges in between and uh, in this game you it's actually like a game so you uh, receive requests from people and then you actually receive their PCs you have a budget they send requests for like part manufacturers and stuff like that it's actually really fun. We will get into that one day, but we're going to do some free build for now just to show you guys how it is and go to introductory into it. And we're just going to build a mid-range PC. Uh, so what we're going to do is go over here to the inventory, click it, and go down to cases. And as you can see, there's actual like parts that exist in real life. See AMD, Ryzen, there's... Intel, there's all this stuff. There's uh, A data, there's G skill, which we've used on the channel before. There's just a bunch of stuff on here that we've used before. See, look, uh, Radeon cards, uh, video cards. It's just, it's all real parts. So, and it's all the real data too. It's like, you know, its frequency in real life is its frequency in the game, which is really cool. So, we're gonna build a nice starting PC. You know, not too expensive, not too cheap, just a good mid-range starting PC for playing games. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to manufacture, no, whoops, manufacture, click fractal design, because in my opinion, it's a pretty good starting case. And as you can see, this is the case from the $1,000 PC build that we did a couple months back. Uh, you can click the i-card in the corner to check that out. Uh, but we're not going to use that one. We're going to use, where is, where is it? Right here. Fractal Design Meshify C Dark TG. So, uh, fun fact actually, this is actually my case at home, except it, um, I have the white variant. Uh, I personally really like white PCs because they look uh, clean, but they, um, it does stick out in my setup, unfortunately, but that's all right. So, and as you can see here, it says remove side part or remove case part side panel. And you just press and hold the screws, like as if you were actually building this PC and it's open. So now we have full access to the PC. So we're gonna throw, you know, just your basic AM4 motherboard into here. We're doing Ryzen by the way, so AM4. Uh, we're gonna do, let's go back in here to the chipset. We're gonna do a uh, X450 chipset. Uh, we're gonna go with, uh, let's go with the cross, let's go with the Asus ROG Crosshair um, is at seven. Hero Wi-Fi. Never mind, that's a $275 motherboard. All right, so we're gonna go a bit cheaper. We're gonna make this a B550 chipset motherboard. We're gonna do this one. Nope, we're gonna go to a different one. I wanna make this just like a nice and not so cheap that you kinda just bail. But not so cheap that you can't do anything on it, but not so expensive that you're blowing your budget. You know, I wanna make this just a basic PC. So you know what, we're gonna go with this one, the ASRock B450 Steel Legend motherboard. 10. So that's so much better. So as you can see here in the corner, you have your retail value for $226. You have the case value, you have the fans that are inside of it, and then you have the other parts which will add a list once we get it going. So what we're doing now is we're just uh, loading up the standoffs, which is what you do normally with a motherboard so you can screw it into the case properly. And you screw it again. I know it takes a little while, but that's okay. Uh, so does screwing in a motherboard. The screwing in a motherboard takes a while anyway. Alright, so now we got the motherboard screwed in. What we're going to do is we're going to add our CPU. And we're not going to go super crazy. We're going to do a Ryzen 5 2600X. That's 6 cores running at uh, uh, 40, 
4,250 megahertz. And we're gonna, as always, open up the metal arm here, press and hold to insert the CPU, and then close the handle again. So there we go, now we have the CPU in there. So now what we're gonna do is install the RAM, so we have the memory. We're gonna go with some basic, let's see here, we're gonna go with some G-Skill RAM. Or we're gonna, you know what, let's go Corsair. Let's go Corsair, let's do it. So we're gonna do, where is it? I had it. Hey, here we go, Corsair Dominator Platinum, eight gigabytes, 37, 33 megahertz. We're gonna insert two sticks into the two and the four slot of the case. Now we have two RAM, see? $796 for two sticks of RAM. You know what, we're gonna switch out this RAM for something a bit more affordable. I want 16 gigs, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to here, which is filter. We're gonna go to size, click minimum, and make the minimum, or make the maximum eight gigs, and make the price maximum $200, or make the price maximum $100. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna here we go here we go uh, eight gigabytes 2400 megahertz which is the same that we had before but it is much cheaper because it is running a lot slower and you know we're running a 2600x and a B uh, b450 motherboard so i don't think we're gonna have that much of an issue next is we're gonna install some storage we're gonna do an m.2 drive so type m.2 and then we're gonna go price maximum under a hundred dollars which we're gonna do we're gonna do the gigabyte or no we're gonna do the is there 500 yes there is kingston a 2000 nvme pcie xsd 500 gigabytes we're gonna install it right here underneath this armor close panel see and it's in there so now what we're gonna do is we are going to open up these PCI Express slots for our graphic card. Now before we do our graphics card, I'm just opening those up for the future. Before we do our graphics card, we're going to install the cooling. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do some uh, air, uh, AIO water cooling. So you go to tools and software, thermal paste, click it, there we go. We're gonna uh, CPU cooling, filter type, liquid cooler and we're going to do price what we do here we go. so we're going to do this antec k yeah the antec uh k240 up here oh we can't all right so what we're going to do actually since we can't do that right now we're going to take this fan right here and we're going to move it to the other side so now i'm going to do this now we can install it screw in your screws now it's installed so now we're going to take that same uh, fan from earlier remove this case part here and we're going to PC parts nope case fans go down to here go down to manufacture fractal design and we have to take a look at which one it is uh, dynamic x2 GP12 x2 GP12 here we go and install another one and you know what we're going to install a third one for good measure we can fit one. No, we cannot because of the drive bay. Uh, no, we're not going to install that. So PC parts, we're going to put the dust filter back on like that. And there we go. Now we have both fans that were originally in the case in here and we have this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into graphics cards. We're not going to go overkill. We're not going to throw a RTX 3090 in there, but we are going to throw a 1000, no, not a 1000 series, a 2000 series in there. We're gonna throw a, let's see, let's see here, we have 2070, 2060. We're gonna throw that right here. So, see, it's right here, $605 for that. And now our PC is almost done. We just need to put in the power supply. So, do that. And now, power supplies, we're going to go with a a data XPG core reactor 750 watt power supply and we're gonna reinstall the PSU mount
Okay, so now what we do is we click cable down here and see all of the highlights. So now we click connect motherboard to the PSU here, 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 to here, here, to here, here, to here. And the last cable in the actual PC itself. And now the PC is complete. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all the parts that we took off all back on and notice how it says down here no OS installed what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to tools and software USB drive we're gonna insert that USB drive into here and connect all the cables you know the HDMI cable display port whatever you want to use and then your keyboard and mouse all right so now they're not using like Windows or Linux or anything, they're using their own software which they made for the game specifically, but that's okay in my opinion. So now what we're gonna do is run this thing called 3D Mark right here. And 3D Mark is a real uh, benchmarking system which will show the capabilities of your system. So restart now, no. And it just it's just faster if I power it off and power it back on. So see Azeroth, okay. So see it's there now. And now we double click and we run it. And I'm gonna speed this up so you guys don't have to sit through this. All right, now we see that the score here, we have the graphics test one and two, which uh, averaged at 45 frames per second and 40 frames per second. And the CPU test, which averaged at uh, 20 frames per second. And then we have all the stuff here. And uh, that's it. So. And that's our PC. What we do now is we take it and we just store it in the, the cupboard. Never to be seen again. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the basics of CPU, CPU PC building simulator and uh, hopefully I will uh, be allowed to make another episode of this where we go into more of the story. Not really story, but like uh, the the, the actual workflow. I just wanted to show you guys like the basics of it and maybe next time we'll do some actual game. Alright, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok because we have that now because we're slave to trends. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.